today i wanted to cover the second uh, step of this uh, organic farm design and uh, in the first session we have seen that uh, once you have uh, the layout is ready you put a boundary of uh, trees and uh, shrubs and all in order to protect the from wind uh, wind uh, damage and as well as to generate mulch and have a high biodiversity and uh, all kind of uh, local trees and uh, shrub varieties can be crammed into this in this border and you can plant quite densely because uh, it's nice lush green with uh, dense greenery and this inter internal area is used for your uh, cultivation and all. Uh, now in this uh, internal uh, area you can divide it into beds and sectors and all. And uh, the second important step uh, what people have to do right at the beginning is you get one of the these uh, engineers to do a survey they get their instruments and all and then they do the survey to see where the slope of the land is so that you can start uh, you can make the arrangement to harvest your water and uh, one of the thing about this uh, water harvesting in particularly in India uh, the rainy season is concentrated uh, over a short period of time and uh, it's very important that all the rain that falls on your land is uh, trapped and uh, allowed to soak up into your land, not flow out of the land. So this water harvesting is the second step. And uh, the best way is, of course, as I said, you get an engineer to do uh, that contour mapping and then they will tell you where the water flows out or another thing can be done you can observe your property in the heavy rains and see how the water flow happens now in my garden the flow is like this so when it rains all the water heavy rain comes all the water fills up here and starts flowing like this downwards and uh, finally when it is uh, water is full it used to flow out of uh, my land here out of the property so what we did we made one uh, got the forklift that uh, digging machine and then uh, made a huge pit over here like an open well so that uh, in the monsoon when the heavy rain comes all the water from all over the land Finally, whatever is, uh, it can get collected here and recharge our uh, groundwater. And even in these places, you have to make these uh, swales. That is, some little trenches and uh, little uh, pits and uh, like that, so that the water should not flow out of your land. So, you have to provide maximum opportunity for the water to sink in. Wherever it falls, it should sink in. And then once these area trenches and these swales are full, they can flow, overflow and then you have one more set of those swales. And then that also will fill up and then it overflows and finally it comes and fills up here. And if this, this fills up normally about four to once in four or five years. The pit I made for this two acre uh, property is about uh, 20 feet by 30 feet and about 30 feet deep. So by doing this, what you're doing is uh, you are, all the when the heavy rains come, the nutrients of the land don't get washed out of your land. Rather, they collect up all of these places, and the water uh, doesn't gush out. It slowly flows out and it seeps into your uh, soil completely. And your target has to be to ensure that not a single drop of water that falls on your land goes out. Everything has to be collected and made to allow to seep into your own groundwater there so that the soil moisture is retained and your well has 
sufficient water and uh, this is a long term benefit you will get by doing this. So step one is make a boundary of trees, multi species trees, shrubs and all kind of local uh, biodiversity. Inside you make little little swales and uh, bunds and all so that you slow down the water and in spite of all that finally some water will flow out of your land and that area you select and make one big pit so that every last drop of water that falls on your uh, property gets seeped into the earth over here.